I'm viewing through the mid anterior portal uh, with my instruments coming through the anterolateral portal. What we've done here is prepared the acetabular rim already. We have a labral tear extending from the 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock position uh, with 3 o'clock being anterior and 12 o'clock being superior. As you can see, the labrum is peeled off the acetabular rim. We have chondral labral junction damage. Uh, this is a labrum that is going to require repair. Interestingly, one of the problems with anchor placement uh, is coming in the anterior position across the psoas recess. Psoas recess is anterior at the 3 o'clock position. What I do to ensure that I do not violate this recess is bring your Apollo wand at a 50 degree curve over the anterior rim. What you can see there is falling into the psoas recess. You can then define this with minimal dissection so that when you put your anchor at the 2.30, 3 o'clock position, you ensure you don't go over the top with violating the psoas recess. We will now proceed with instrumentation uh, using a dalla portal, which we've identified here. The dalla portal is used to drill, suture placement, and anchor placement all in one. We'll start with drilling with a fish mouth guide at the anterior superior rim. This is the 12 o'clock anchor. The drill comes in, oscillating. We're going to drill all holes at the same time. We then advance for our second hole. And then our final hole, our anterior hole position. Again, knowing where the psoas recess is, we're going to drill and avoid violation of that psoas recess. The drill can then be removed, and this, the guide can then be utilized effectively as suction to remove the bone debris from the pre-drilled holes. This allows identification of these holes to easily place the push lock anchors. Once this is done, the guide can be removed. The next step is placement of suture tape circumferentially. I prefer a circumferential labral repair. This allows me uh, to appropriately control the labrum while minimizing labral eversion. At the 12 o'clock position, the hole is identified. The labral scorpion slides off the acetabular rim, easily visualizing anteriorly. The sutures passed, retrieved, and through the dalla portal, we are now ready for anchor placement. The biocomposite anchor can be easily loaded with the suture tape. Again, without any suture retrieval, we are already through the dalla portal. Once this is anchored, it can be easily slipped down the dalla portal, ensuring orientation. With this position, the push lock can also serve as a slight retractor. You can then see the anchor placed in the position, check your tension, ensure you like your tension. This can be easily identified. Once that is appropriately tensioned, it is then impacted into place. This has a laser line which allows appropriate positioning. Once that laser line is flush with the base of the anchor, perfect, that can then be unscrewed. That was slight pulling. That'll slide right on out. The next step is the new Arthrex suture tape cutter loads as an end loading system and then easily slides down the portal and cuts perfectly as an end cut at the level, we pull on the sutures a little bit, a gentle suture pressure will allow ease of cutting at the level of the anchor. The first stitch is then placed. I prefer suture tape as opposed to fiber wire because it broadens the pressure on the labrum and minimizes potential labral cut through if a patient has a traumatic event. Once this is done, the next suture can be placed. Again, identifying the previous position, rolling over, suture passage and retrieval. This can then be loaded up in the same suture technique fashion as before, lowering the biocomposite push lock. Again, without any suture retrieval or portal change, this is all performed through the dalla portal, ensuring that the suture is appropriately positioned, ready for placement, the biocomposite anchor is identified, tension is confirmed, and then the laser is malleted in for security at the laser line. Perfect. A small sound change can be used to confirm that the anchor is fully secured. Once this is removed, this is then loaded up as an end loading suture tape cutter. And then again, through the dalla portal, it's easily placed and cut. It's an end cut suture, ease of passage, minimal soft tissue injury. This can then be finally repeated for the third anchor. 
The third anchor position is identified. Again, sliding off the acetabular rim to ensure you're not in coming through bone. The suture's passed, retrieved. As you can see, the biocomposite anchor is small, very minimal profile with excellent security. It is loaded simply with the suture tape, placed through. This is then passed through the anchor. Suture tape passes very easily and is designed for this purpose specifically. Again, slid down in the appropriate position, identifying the placement of the tape, identifying the anchor pre-drilled position. It's then tensioned correctly, and final security is confirmed, malleting to the laser line. Perfect, hearing the sound change confirms the appropriate position. It's then unscrewed, removed, and then the final suture is cut flush. Perfect. This completes the final labral repair. Again, you can see the position of the three o'clock anchor, the over the top position, adequate bone stock between the hole and the psoas recess to ensure that there is no psoas irritation because we confirmed that position previously. Restoration of the chondral labral junction is confirmed. I prefer a circumferential labral repair for the reason that you get more labral tissue within your repair, it minimizes potential pullout of the suture. And with the suture repair and the tensioning capabilities of the push lock, labral eversion is very, very hard to do. Uh, as a result, the suction seal is always restored, even without a labral base stitch. And more labral tissue is incorporated, strengthening the repair. Once the, the labral repair is completed, traction can then be removed. The hip can be flexed. The suction seal is restored. You can see the sutures well repair the labral tear with adequate restoration of the entire suction seal from native labrum to native labrum with a complete repair of the labral tear.